everyone, welcome back. All right, we're here to bring you another awesome workout. It's Coach Tommy Palm. I got Coach Tommy Carter behind me, as well as Coach Gab. We're gonna get after another awesome workout. Uh, before we do, we're gonna get into our warm-up. Uh, today, we're gonna be doing a lot of hip openers, a little bit of the shoulder stuff. So we're all gonna start on the floor, okay? We're gonna go into what's called frog stretch. Uh, looks a little weird, but really great stretch for your squat. All right, what you're gonna do is spread out your legs, and we're gonna get our knees in line with our ankle. All right, from here, you can come down to all fours, and really what's most, most important is I want you to drive your hips and butt back, okay? You should feel a stretch ha uh, happen in the middle of your legs, all right? Um, if you're someone who squats, you can look at me, and when you're squatting, okay, and your knees start to cave as you come in, uh, it could be an issue just because your hips are like, don't do that, I don't want any part of that. All right, so this is a great stretch just to open you up uh, to start off. So we're gonna hang out here for like 20 more seconds, all right, if you don't feel a stretch, I'd recommend just widening out your legs as much as you can and really focus on driving your hips and butt back. All right, so like I said, lots of hips today because we do have a good amount of squatting. We got a strength portion and a conditioning portion for you guys today. Um, so from here, what we're gonna do is now we're gonna be stretching out the glutes. So we're gonna come into pigeon with your right leg out in front, okay? Once again, um, knee, try to get in line with your ankle if possible. Okay, you can keep your body nice and upright. Your back leg should be straight. Uh, the, uh, your back knee could be touching the floor. If this isn't intense enough for you, you can reach your hands forwards. And if this isn't enough, you can then walk your hands towards the leg that is out in front. So in this case, the right side. Once again, what we're looking for is a stretch in your glute and hip. All right, if you're someone who squats and all of a sudden your back tightens up. Uh, this could be why your glute might just be extremely tight. So you gotta open that up a little bit before you start, okay? The glute tends to pull on the back. Um, so that's just something that could be occurring for you. Then let's switch up the leg. Once again, we're gonna have that left leg out in front. Okay, one leg is normally tighter than the other. Um, in this case, my left leg is tighter. This is why you don't see my ankle in line with my knee. I just can't get it up there and I feel a much more intense stretch. Um, that's just what's going on for me right now. All right, we're gonna hold this for about 20 more seconds, guys. Okay, very good. Now what we're gonna do is come in for the hip flexor, the front of our leg, your right knee is gonna be down. Your left foot is gonna come up, okay? And we're gonna be in the bottom of a lunge. What I want you to do, okay, is slightly drive this hip forwards, okay? And squeeze the glute, okay? That's just gonna activate your hip flexor. From here, reach the same arm up as the knee that is bent, okay? Where you have a nice proud chest. You don't need to over arch and lean back. Stand nice and tall, squeeze your glute, drive the hip forward slightly. You should feel a stretch somewhere from your hip into your quad. about 10 more seconds on this side. In three, two, one, and switch. Once again, slightly drive that hip forward, squeeze the glute, raise the arm. Um, when you squat, your hip flexors tend to get very tight. If you don't take care of them before and after your workout, it can lead to numerous things, knee pain, back pain, you're just constantly bending at the hip and then opening it, and that tends to shorten, okay? So what you gotta do is sometimes just lengthen it slightly before and after, it could relieve a lot of pain that you're having. About 10 more seconds on this side. Okay. Longer squat hold, so everyone come on up. Okay, and what we're gonna do is just get your feet in squat with stance. All right, we're all gonna come on down into the bottom of a squat now. Okay, we're gonna use our knee, our, I'm sorry, our elbow to drive out our knees. Pull your chest up as best you can. Okay, and just sink down to that squat. We're gonna be hanging out here for a while. Um, I just want you guys to get comfortable. If you have to stand up at any point, no big deal. Try to get back down. All right, keep pushing that right knee out with your right elbow. Turn your left arm nice and high. Good, hang out here for a little bit longer. Good, and switch. Driving that knee out, open that chest up, 
Make sure all parts of your feet are on the floor right now. You don't want to be on your toes or on just mainly on your heels. You want the full foot on the floor. Good, come back to prayer. Okay, we're gonna grab, okay, our toes. Okay, we're just gonna pick our hips up, try to straighten out the legs, hold. Good, come back down, pull that chest up as you do. Good, again, pull the hips up. Good, back down. Good, three more times, picking the hips up. Good, back down. Two more, back up. Back down, we have one more guys, stay with me here. Sit here, pull that chest up. All right, hips up, hold. We're gonna finish by going back down and down. All right, stand, shake out your legs real fast. Now you're just gonna give me five squats to reopen everything up. All right, so hips should be feeling good, squats should be feeling warm. Let's get into our workout, all right? The first thing we're gonna start is with a strength portion. How it's gonna work is we're gonna be doing an EMOM for six minutes. EMOM stands for every minute on the minute, okay? If you're new to EMOM, it just means you're gonna perform something every 60 seconds. So the first three minutes, we're gonna be doing 40 seconds of work, 20 seconds of rest, max with dumbbell front squats or kettlebell. Let me show you what the front squat looks like so you can give Coach Tommy Carter your attention. You're gonna pick that dumbbell up. You're just gonna show us two quick reps. You got a heavy dumbbell, making it look light. Very nice. So a couple things we're gonna talk about for the front squat, all right, is the first thing is your positioning. So he's gonna bring the dumbbell up, all right, and the front rack, the back head of the dumbbell is rested on the shoulder. The elbow is nice and high. Nice, proud chest, really engaging the shoulders. His opposite hand, as you see, is off to the side. When he comes on down, he's gonna pause real fast. Once again, it's heavy, so I don't want him to sit here too long. You see his knees track over his toes, his knees are out, and then stands to complete the rest. His hips fully extend, that's one. Just one more rep, please. Very good, and rest. Once again, we're gonna be working for 40 seconds. Max repetition front squats. You're gonna do 20 seconds on your right arm. After 20 seconds, I'll let you know, you're gonna switch and bring the dumbbell to the opposite arm. And we'll do 20 seconds there. At the 40 second mark, we'll then rest the time remaining, which is 20 seconds. We'll do that for three straight rounds. If you have a kettlebell, check out Coach Gab really fast. It's relatively the same, okay? You can see the fist, okay? He's got it nice and strong, tucked underneath the chin. The bell rests on the shoulder and elbow, and he does the same, just one quick squat. Thank you. Okay, from there, we're gonna go into a hip thrust, okay? So let me just show you what it looks like once again with Coach Tommy. He's gonna be laying flat on his back, where you want the dumbbell is right where you would, uh, your belt buckle would be, okay? So right on the waistline. He's gonna lay flat on his back, his knees are bent, okay? He's holding the dumbbell by the, the head on each hand, okay? He's gonna extend at the hip, squeeze his butt, and then return to the floor, that's one. Just a couple more reps, two, and three. Very good, nice, slow, and controlled. Um, there's many benefits to this. I'll go over them while we're doing them, all right? Um, if you have Coach Gab uh, kettlebell, you can check out Coach Gab. Same deal. He's just holding it by the, the handle strap of the belt. He extends at the hip, squeezes the glute, and returns to the floor. All right? So once again, for both of them, we're going to be doing three minutes straight of front squats, 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off, and then three minutes straight of 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off of the hip thrust. Let's get after it. All right. So you guys could all start with your right arm for the front squat. And once again, we're gonna be switching every 20 seconds which arm we're working with. All right guys, here we go in five, three, two, one, let's go. All right, nice, slow and controlled guys. We are going for max reps, but we're looking for quality over quantity today. Okay, once again, you can see that back head is rested on the shoulder. He's keeping his chest nice and proud, driving his knees out. Okay, in three, two, one, and you're gonna switch arms now, guys. A quick switch, okay, it shouldn't take too long. Okay, the most important thing you can do when you're squatting is making sure your knees track over your toes. If your knees tend to cave in constantly, either switch up your stance or go with a lighter weight, control it, pause in the bottom. We got five seconds. Three, two, one, and rest. 
You now have 20 seconds of rest, guys, and we're gonna be doing two more sets of that. All right, we're gonna be going back to the right arm for this second set. Okay, you still have 10 seconds. Take your time, shake out your legs, catch your breath. Here we go, in five, three, two, one, and here we go. Coach Tommy and Coach Gav both have very good looking squats. Um, honestly, much better than mine. They're very upright in the bottom. They can get very low. Um, this isn't the case for everyone, but I would, if you could mimic these guys, I'd recommend it. Nice job, Gav. In three, two, one, and switch. If you have a kettlebell and you wanna just tone in on me, real fast, look at Coach Gav. He's doing a great job of using his arm just to let the kettlebell rest on his shoulder. Once again, the fist is right underneath the chin. You don't want your hand up and high to the side. In five, guys. Three, two, one, and rest. Good. We now have one more set of squats, all right? And then we're gonna be moving on to the hip thrust. All right, final set of squats. In, 10. In, five. Three, two, one, and here we go. Okay, why we're having this dumbbell just rest on your shoulder and not you just, you know, letting it sit in the middle of the trap, which we do sometimes. Um, these do a really good job of building some proper positioning with your shoulders, you know, um, you know, just your posture in everyday life. You want to be nice and upright, pull your shoulder blades back. That's what helps here. In two, one, and switch. Final set, final 20 seconds. Let's get some reps in, guys. Looking good. Very nice. In five, three, two, one, and rest. All right, we're done with the squats. We're now moving on to the hip thrust. So you guys could bring your dumbbells back to your mat if you have one at home. Okay, once again, we're gonna be having bent knees, okay? That dumbbell or kettlebell is resting right on your hips, right where you would belt, uh, your butt belt would get trapped. All right, here we go in three, two, one, and begin. Okay, at the top of the rep, Okay, your hips should be fully extended. If you can get your hips and knees in one straight line, that's awesome, okay? Once again, their knees are bent, and okay, great, and their feet are right underneath them. They're really focused on pushing through the floor with their heels and like, squeezing their butt at the top of every rep. All right, you guys are 20 seconds in, 20 more seconds to go. Where you might feel this would be your glutes, okay, your hamstrings, and your hips. All right, we're trying to build up that posterior chain. All right, we got 10 more seconds, guys. In five, three, two, one, and rest. Nice. All right, you can put that dumbbell off to the side if you need to, or you could just let it rest there. You guys now have 20 seconds of rest. Looking good. All right, here we go. In five, three, two, one, and begin. Okay, round two. Uh, many benefits to this movement. I won't go into detail on all of them, but okay, one that you could just kind of see is uh, it's really good for explosiveness, okay? Whenever you're doing like a clean or a snatch or something where you just have to extend at the hips, all right? Making your hips have to work harder by adding weight to it, okay? And having to explode up, okay? This is one of the many benefits to it. You got 15 more seconds, guys. Nice, Gav. That's it, guys. In 10. Five, three, two, one, and rest. Good stuff. All right, two rounds down, one more to go. When we're done, all right, you can just give me your attention. I'm sure you are anyway. We're gonna go into our conditioning portion, all right? So we have 10 seconds. We're finishing up our final round of 40 seconds of hip thrust. In three, two, one, let's go. Good stuff, guys. That's it, now keep on working. You got a barbell at home? These get really good with a barbell. Um, not that they're not good with a dumbbell or a kettlebell, but um, you'll mainly see people using this with a barbell just because you can load so much weight on there. Um, really good stuff, guys. 10 more seconds. Almost there. In five, three, two, one, and rest. 
good stuff. All right, so we're done with the strength portion. Uh, we wanted your legs to feel nice and warm for this conditioning portion. Let me explain, uh, I'm gonna hold the board. If you can't see it, um, you could always just check out SugarWatt. I would recommend doing that anyway. Check out SugarWatt or the description in the video. Write it down, this way you don't get lost and understand what I'm saying. Regardless, what we have for you today, okay, is an AMRAP for seven minutes, all right? And how it's gonna work is we're gonna be doing what's called a kettlebell tater, okay? And the tater is gonna be a ladder. And what we mean by that is each round, you're gonna add an additional rep to the tater. So how the workout starts is with five kettlebell taters. From the tater, you're gonna go to five kettlebell or dumbbell floor press, five on each arm, and then 10 mountain climbers, 10 on each leg. When you finish the mountain climbers, you go back to the tater. This time, we're gonna be adding an additional rep. So from instead of five, you're gonna do six. Once you do six, you then want to then do five on each arm of the floor press, 10 mountain climbers on each leg. And then it goes seven, five, 10, eight, five, 10, nine, five, 10. And you're gonna see how far you can get in the seven minutes. Once we complete the seven minute AMRAP, we're then gonna rest two minutes, okay? And we're gonna be going in reverse order. And we're gonna try to finish the workout in under seven minutes. I'll go into more detail about that when we get there, but just so you have an idea, let's say we finished the round of 10, which means we did 10 taters, five kettlebell floor press, 10 mountain climbers. The next seven and an AMRAP will be going down, so you'll be doing reverse order. 10 mountain climbers, then five floor press, and then 10 taters, and then go 10, five, nine, 10, five, eight all the way back down. If you finish all the work prescribed in under the seven minutes, you're done. But let's just focus on the first part right now, okay? And that's just going up. So five, five, 10, six, five, 10, seven, five, 10, et cetera. All right, so let's go over the tater, okay? So uh, let's just watch Coach Tom. We're also gonna be toning on Coach Gab because it's a complicated movement. Uh, we wanna make sure you're efficient with both uh, pieces of equipment. So this is the tater. Just watch Coach Tom for right now. That's one, that's two, and rest. Okay, so it is a swing. Um, if you have a dumbbell at home, how it works is you grab the top head of your dumbbell in your starting position. He's gonna show your hips are back, your chest is pulled up, and your hands wrapped around there. From there, he's not gonna do it yet. He's gonna pull that dumbbell into his hips, extend, and what he's actually gonna do is flip the dumbbell around. So he's gonna catch the opposite head of the dumbbell, come into a squat, extend at the hip. Watch, here it goes. Okay, he extends, he flips, catches the opposite pair of the dumbbell, the opposite head rather. He's gonna then from here, squat, come all the way up, push the dumbbell away and return to the normal head. Okay, it's a little hard to explain without doing it. Okay, you could rest. My big thing for you, okay, is when you go and flip and catch it, make sure the dumbbell's pressed against your chest. And then when you go and squat, when you're extending at the hip, push the dumbbell lightly away from you have fast hands and grab the opposite head. Let me just show one more rep and watch. He's gonna slightly push it away from him. And this is really just gonna help him get his hands on the opposite head. Slight little push away and grab, all right? Don't do too much work. Thank you, Tom, all right? Now let's watch Coach Gab. Okay, it's gonna be the same exact movement, but it's a little more complicated because you're holding onto a handle and then flipping over to the head of the bell. Let's just see a couple reps. One, good. Good, and rest. So as you can see, he's holding on to that handle and as he flips the bell, his hands just come to the outside and grab the bell. He's not doing a lot of work. It's from the handle to the head, handle to the head. Okay, just one more rep. Okay, hands are on the handle, he swings. Okay, grabs the head, pushes away and grabs. Okay, so it's a swing and squat every time. You'll be building throughout the seven minutes, starting with five. From there, we're gonna go into what's called the floor press, okay? Let's watch Coach Tom. He's gonna be laying flat on his back. Okay, in the starting position. Before you get it up there, just check out what he's doing. He's laying on his side towards the belly. He's got his right hand under. His left hand's gonna actually come over the top. He's gonna turn his body and get it just on his chest. From here, in the bottom position, he's gonna just press it up for me. Okay, to start, your arm is fully extended, elbows locked out, dumbbell stacked on the shoulder. He's gonna go down. Once his elbow touches, he then extends violently. He makes sure his arm fully extended. That's one. That's two, and one more rep. That's three. After the third, he'll bring it down to his chest. He has both hands on the dumbbell. He switches to the opposite side. After you do five there, he'll do five on this side. You could rest, okay? 
That's just real brief, okay? Uh, same thing for Coach Gav. He's gonna just be holding the bell, letting it rest on his forearm. I'll show you as you're going along, but it's, it's relatively the same thing. Then from there, you go into 10 mountain climbers. It's gonna be 10 on each leg. So technically 20 if you wanna just keep counting up. Uh, a couple quick reps just look like this. Okay, we're looking for range of motion, quick feet, uh, knees to the elbow. Thank you guys. All right, so we're gonna get to this start. I'm gonna repeat this one more time just so we're not confused. We're going for seven minutes, as many rounds as possible. It goes five taters, then five floor press on each side, 10 mountain climbers, then six, five, 10, seven, five, 10. So the taters keep going up, the other movements stay the same. All right, let's get after it guys. Seven minutes on and then two minutes of rest. I'll let you know what you're doing after that two minutes. Here we go guys, in five, three, two, one, let's go. Very nice. Once again, guys, the tater is a swing and squat every time, okay? Don't double squat. What I mean by that is when you're doing the swing, you shouldn't be squatting. You should be driving your hips and butt back. Very nice. Looking good. From those taters, you can go right into the floor press. All right, the floor press should be relatively heavy today, guys. You're doing five on each arm. Five isn't a ton of reps. We're looking to build some strength in your shoulders, your chest, your triceps, all right? Really building those up. If you're having a tough time with the transition from one arm to the other, make sure you check out Coach Tommy at some point in this workout. He does a really good job. After he finishes that fifth rep, he just rests it on his chest and switches there. Don't bring it down to the floor and try to switch like that. Very nice. Coach Tom is done with the floor press. He's moving on to the mountain climbers. So is Coach Gav. They're just one minute into this workout. Looking good, guys. So at first the workout's gonna start, it's probably gonna feel a lot like you're doing a lot of floor presses, a lot of mountain climbers, and then it's gonna switch, and all of a sudden you're doing a ton of taters. I was talking earlier, Tom turned sideways for us, check out the angle of his back. He pushes his hips and butt back, he has a very minimal bend in the knee. We're not squatting when the swing is occurring, okay? We are hinging. Another thing about the floor press is Check out his arms, okay? It's nice and tight to the body. We're not turning that elbow out. We're keeping everything nice and tight. Elbows should be close to the rib cage as you're coming down. Uh, the reason we do it this way is just a little more functional. We wanna focus on building up the tricep more than your chest, all right? That's what we're looking at right now. So once again, guys, the reps on the floor press and the mountain climber stay the same. You're doing five on each side for the floor press and 10 mountain climbers. Okay, you don't have to build in reps there. Nice, Tommy. Sick, Gav. Good work, man. Good. All right, and they are finishing up the round of six right now with their mountain climbers. They're just over two minutes in. Once again, guys, we're looking for range of motion on these mountain climbers. Try to get that knee up to the elbow. Tom is now beginning the round of six, and so is Coach Gav. Seven. I'm sorry, guys. Round of seven. Nice. There it is. Good. A big thing to do when you're doing the tater is never take your eyes off the dumbbell or kettlebell. Always staring at it. As you're doing the swing and it's coming through your legs, stare at it. As you're extending and letting go, stare at it. Okay, that would be my biggest tip for you guys. Nice, Gav. Here we go, guys. Nice. Good. Okay, the starting position, just notice the knees are bent. Okay, use your legs, okay? You could drive through the floor with your heels. It's a full body movement, it's a very explosive movement. Um, this is a great accessory work for the bench press, okay? A lot of power lifters utilize this movement and focusing on their lockout for the bench. Good guys, good job, good job. They are finishing up the round of seven. Moving fast, just holding over a one minute round time. On, actually, it's a 110 round time to be exact. They are three minutes and 30 seconds in onto the round of eight taters. Okay, you can notice both their squats still look great. Okay, their knees are tracked over their toes. They're going as low as they can. If you have a tough time squatting with volume, meaning when you do a lot of reps, your knees start to give out on you or your back starts to tighten up, you can always just go to a power clean instead. You don't have to go all the way down. You'll just catch it in a quarter squat rather than a full squat, okay? Just something for you to do instead. 
a good time. Another benefit of the floor press is you don't have to go all the way down. So the dumbbell doesn't have to touch your chest. Okay, you're storing the range of motion. Why that may be a good thing is if you have like a shoulder injury, okay, a lot of people as they get closer and closer to their chest, it starts to irritate them. Okay, this is really good because you don't have to go as low. So it normally tends to, you know, um, not hurt as much as your traditional bench press. Looking good, guys. Four and a half minutes in, they have two and a half minutes to go. Keep up the good work. Sick ad, nice job, Tommy. Nice. As you can see, both mine and Gavin's Metcons are untied. Um, if you happen to have this problem, please comment below because for some reason my Metcons constantly untie. They're looking good, moving through the round of nine, I believe, right now. Nice, Tom. Less than two minutes. They're on pace to get this round in, plus some extra reps. Every rep counts here, guys, so let's get as far as we can. All right, come on now. Yeah, Gav, good stuff. That's it, man. Really good. Nice switch, Gav, nice switch. There it is, Tom. Yep. Looking good, guys. Looking good. Let's transfer over to those mountain climbers. Guys moving smooth right now. Tom's catching right behind him. You guys have one minute left in this AMRAP. Let's see how far we can get. Let's see how far now, okay? Here we go, right to those taters. Right to those taters, the round of 10. That's one, nice, Gav. Come on, let's go. Good. That's it, Tom. Come on, let's go. Let's go. 40 seconds now, guys, 40 seconds. There it is, there it is. Get that dumbbell and kettlebell pressed right against your chest. Keep your upper body nice and tight as you're squatting. There it is. There it is, Tom. Come on, Gav. Let's go. Let's go. Less than 30 seconds. Let's go. There it is. 20 seconds now, guys. Let's finish this thing strong. Let's finish this thing strong. In. 10 seconds. In three, two, one, and rest. Okay, we now have two minutes of rest, guys. Let me explain once again. We're now gonna be going in reverse order, okay? So let's say you completed the round of nine, which would mean you did nine taters, then five core plus, and then 10 mountain climbers. That is completing the round, okay? If you completed the round and that's where you finish, no extra reps, your order will now be reversed. You will then start this workout with 10 mountain climbers, five floor press, and then go nine taters. Then you'll go 10, five, eight, 10, five, seven, 10, five, six, okay, uh, all the way down. If you complete 10 mountain climbers, five floor press, and five taters before the workout is, uh, the seven minutes is up, your workout is done, okay? Um, so now let's say you had some scrap reps. So you completed the round of nine, okay, but after the round of nine, so you did nine mountain climbers, let's say you did all 10 taters and only five floor press on one arm, okay? How the workout starts is you're gonna do the same arm for five floor press. From there, you go 10 taters, okay? So we're just going reverse, exactly what you did. From the taters, you then go to the mountain climbers, then to the floor press, then nine taters, 10, five, eight, 10, five, seven. So you're just reversing the exact order you did, okay? So wherever you just left off, you're starting and going backwards, okay? We got over 30 seconds. Yep, so where'd you guys finish off? I have to do three floor press, 10 taters. Yep, so Tommy finished with three floor presses there, okay? He's now gonna do three and go back to the taters. So I finished both sets of floor presses. Coach Gavin finished both sets of floor presses, so he has to do five on each arm and then go to his taters. We got 10 seconds, guys. I'm gonna start the clock, don't worry, there's no rush. Okay, if you're at home with me, not to worry. We're gonna be on another seven minute clock, all right? So everyone gets situated. Let's get after this thing. 
All right, here we go. Starting where you left off. In three, two, one, let's go. Very nice. Okay, so Tommy did his three floor press, which is where he left off. He's now going reverse order. So you're not going to mountain climber. You're going back to the last set of taters you completed. Okay, for him, I believe, was the round of 10. Okay, now we're in a fight with the clock. Now we're fighting the clock. So we're trying to complete all the work we just did in the last round before this clock ends up, all right? If the seven minutes occurs before you finish, that's perfectly fine. Let's just see if we could push these last seven minutes, guys. Sit, Gav. Good. Nice, Tommy. Very good. Okay, from the taters, you now go to mountain climbers, okay? So just think of the round starting with mountain climbers and ending with taters, okay? Good, Gav. Good, Gav. Okay, now he's going to do all five on both arms. He's in the round of nine. There it is, Tom. Good job, Gav. Okay, if you got a kettlebell at home, really just let that thing sit on your forearm when you're doing the floor press. Keep everything nice and tight. I imagine if you have a, especially a heavier dumbbell at home or kettlebell, whatever you're using for that floor press, if it's heavy, I imagine those are getting extremely challenging at this point. You guys are now probably over 50, 60 floor presses in total. A lot on the chest. Nice, Gav. There it is, man. Holding on now. Just know that the taters are going to get easier as you push through these bigger sets. That's where your mindset's got to be. Get through the big sets. Okay, it's going to get easier. Let's see if these guys can get the work done in the seven minutes. They're just two minutes in with less than five remaining. Sit, Gav. So if you did get farther in the AMRAP to start, all right, it is more challenging to get back. Regardless, though, you put in the work you could in seven minutes. You got as far as you could in seven. Let's see if you could beat it now. Let's see if you could do it in six and a half minutes. All right, a win's a win. Sit, Tom. Good. Nice job, Tom. Come on. Good, come on. Yeah, there you go. There you go. job. I believe Gav is through the round of eight now. Sit, Tommy. Good. That's it, buddy. Another impressive thing about Coach Tommy Carter is that he squats in running shoes. Okay, that's, that's not easy. Good stuff, Gav. Let's go. Let's go. There it is. Nice, man. Come on now. Come on now. Coach Gav is transitioning smoothly right from the floor press to the tater. Okay, making sure he's extending his hips at the top of each rep. Okay, fully extending, locking out the knees, guys. Sit, Tom. Come on. Good. Tom's doing his best to stay unbroken on these floor press. I see it's becoming challenging. That's good stuff. I'm sure that's happening to you at home. Grind through, guys. Grind through. Sit, Tom. Come on. Yeah, man. Nice job. Okay, we just have under three minutes to go, guys. Keep pushing the pace. All about transitions now. Yeah, Gav. Keep working, buddy. Good. Good. Yeah, Tom. Come on. Come on. That's it, buddy. Come on. Holding on. Holding on, guys. Got to stay unbroken in these last few rounds, guys. Got to stay unbroken. Let's go, Gav. There it is. There it is. Come on. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Two minutes to go, guys. Just 
two minutes to go. Six, Tom. Come on. That's it, bud. You got it. Come on. Yup. Yup. Nice job, man. Let's go. Tom's using that big boy today on this floor press. That's a 60-pound dumbbell that is not light by any means. There it is, Gavin. Come on. Keep pushing. That's it, Gavin. Gavin's going to get through this thing. He's almost there. Let's go, man. You guys got 90 seconds. 90 seconds. One. Good job, Gavin. Two. There it is. Come on. Three. Four. Come on. Five. And Gav is done. He has finished the work. Okay. Awesome job. He finished in five minutes and 45 seconds. He now gets to rest. Coach Tom is finishing up, I believe, his final round. He's grinding through. Let's see if he can get it done in under seven. I think he will. He's got one minute to do it. That's it, Tommy. Yep. Nice, man. Nice, man. There it is. Come on. Come on. Yep. Okay. Tom's got one more round after this. Here he goes. He's moving on the mountain climbers. Here he goes. He's got over 30 seconds. Come on. Let's go. Here it is. Here it is. One. Two. Good job, Tom. Little miss up on the dumbbell if you're watching home. We got 20 seconds now. It's all good. Three. Four. And five. Nice job, guys. Awesome work, guys. Tom did an extra set of mountain climbers there, so if that's why you might have been a little confused. He got it done. It is now seven minutes in, so no matter what, you are done, whether you finished all the allotted work or not. If you want to keep going, you're more than welcome to. If not, you're going to join me in a quick little cool-down stretch. Uh, we're going to do some more hip stuff, okay? So the first one, everyone just lay flat on your back. We did this one yesterday, um, but I'm just going to just a little switch up. Um, I, this is like it's something I do every day, so it's never too much. Um, we're going to be doing the iron cross, okay? So lay flat on your back for me, all right? And you're going to focus on pulling your left knee into you and then across your body. Use that arm to push the knee down, all right? Your left arm, the opposite arm, should just be on the floor, okay? So you don't want the shoulder to come off. Keep your body square and just keep pushing down on that knee. You should feel a nice stretch in your glute and lower back. And we're just going to hold here. Between all the hinging and squatting, the hips are going to be tight, the back might be fatigued at this point. This is a great stretch to do before and after any hinging or squatting movements. Good. Let's switch up the legs. Sit on up. Your feet are going to be straight out in front of you, okay? Uh, with long arms, okay, you can just reach on up and then reach on towards those toes. Get as far as you can. It's a good stretch for the hamstrings or lower back, okay? If you can reach your toes, that's great. I'm a little cold right now. I'm not getting too far there, as you can see. About 10 more seconds. All right, guys, we're going to do one final stretch. Make it back to all fours for me. Okay, and we're just going to alternate between cat and cow, pressing your upper back to the ceiling and arching your back and pulling your chin nice and high. When you're pushing your upper back into the ceiling, focus on blowing the air out of your stomach, okay? Really crunching at the stomach and push up the shoulder blades into the ceiling. Pull the chin nice and high, arch the back, hold for a quick second. Okay. 
All right, guys, awesome job today. Great work, okay, you guys killed it. Uh, please subscribe, like, share our video. We greatly appreciate it, guys. Have an awesome rest of your Saturday.